Hi, my name is Leila Cheko, and today I want to give you a short historical video about the importance of education. Now, what I think is really cool about history is the fact that we can look at events in the past, trace them along, and see how they really have a huge effect on how society is today. And so I'll be talking about education. What I'm really interested in is education under the context of the civil rights movement from the 1950s onward in the United States. So let's start with this name. Can anyone tell me who this is? Isn't he the president of America? Yeah, Barack Obama is the 44th president of the United States. Now, what's particularly important about Barack Obama? I believe he's the first African American president. That's right. Barack Obama is the first African American, or black, president in American history. Now, in 2010, with so many black legislators in the United States Congress, it's tough to really see why this is such a profound thing. And so what I want to do is to kind of give a historical look to show why Barack Obama being the president now is such an achievement given the civil rights movement in America. And so I think the best part to start with is a famous United, United States of America Supreme Court case called the Brown versus the Board of Education. Now the United States Supreme Court is the highest court in America. And so when they rule on a case, it becomes law. So until 1954, schools were segregated. Segregation means that you have black students and you have white students. And black students and white students don't go to the same school. So the school you attended was the result of your skin color. So I mean, if you look down at your skin, you really don't have a choice whether you're born black or whether you're born white. And so from an early age, your education is chosen just by the fact that you were born a certain way. And so in 1954, the United States Supreme Court decided to hear a case brought forth by a citizen, Brown, saying that it's not fair that blacks cannot attend the same schools as whites. In the United States Constitution, which is the founding document of America, the 14th Amendment, the 14th change to the document, said that blacks are citizens just like whites. So what this case really did was look at if blacks are the same as whites in terms of citizenship, why are they treated so differently? And so in 1954, in a landmark case, landmark meaning that it had huge effects, the Supreme Court ruled 9 to 0, meaning that 9 justices said yes, 0 said no, that schools should be desegregated. And desegregated means that blacks and whites can attend the same schools. So this was an incredibly important event in the civil rights movement. And the civil rights movement was a series of changes in America that gave more and more rights to African Americans in American society. But not everyone agreed with the Brown versus Board of Education ruling. And there was an incredibly famous event called the Little Rock Nine. And this took place in the state of Arkansas, in Little Rock, Arkansas, in 1957. And what happened was the governor of the state of Arkansas didn't agree that students should be allowed to attend schools not based on the color of their skin. And so he said no black students will ever attend a white school. And so he sent in the state troopers, which was the state military, to prevent these students from, the nine students from entering one of the schools. And what happened was that when a United States Supreme Court case becomes law, the president upholds that law. And so President Eisenhower at the time sent in the National Guard, which was the United States military, to allow these nine students to attend school. And eventually they did. But what I think is really important is that the Brown versus the Board of Education ruling happened in 1954. But Barack Obama wasn't elected to office until 2008. So how can we have almost a 54 year difference between blacks being allowed to attend the same schools as whites and the first black president being elected? And so what I really want to talk about now is how long it takes for change to happen. Because just because this became law, it didn't happen overnight that someone could be elected the first black president. 
And so I've made a list here of incredibly important events in the civil rights movement. And you can see Brown versus the Board of Education is the first one in 1954. But it's not until the 90s, the 1990s, when most of you were born, that we see it starting to show fertile ground for the first president to be elected. And so we talked about Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954 and how that was the first case that showed that blacks and whites should be allowed to go to the same school. And Little Rock, Arkansas in 1957, only three years after. But what about the March on Washington? where 200 to 300,000 African Americans marched on the city of Washington, D.C. to protest the fact that they couldn't get jobs or a better education just because of the color of their skin. And look at, I mean, look down at your skin. It's not something that you can choose. I mean, all your parents, do they have jobs? Just imagine if they couldn't get jobs just because of the fact that their skin was a certain color. And this is what was happening for millions of Americans but the law had already changed, saying that blacks could attend the same schools as whites. So why weren't they? And this march in 2000, sorry, in 1963, with more than 200,000 people, was a protest on that. And then we can look at President John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson in the 1960s giving, I guess, civil rights, uh, civil rights acts to make law that blacks and whites ought to be treated more equally. But what was really interesting here is that the March on Washington and the Black Power Movement were populist uprisings, meaning that they were comprised of groups of angry people because they felt that the government rulings weren't working fast enough. Because, and they, they may have been right, because if we look back, 1954 is when the ruling is, but by the 1960s, more than 10 years after, it's still unequal. And so the Black Power Movement and the March on Washington were incredibly important events in the civil rights movement for African Americans to get more equal rights in society. In the 1990s, we have the Los Angeles riots after an individual, his name was Rodney King, was driving down the highway and he was speeding and the police pulled him over and he was beaten quite savagely by four or five officers, and there was a camera in a helicopter that saw it happen. And this sparked what was called the race riots, where there was looting and protesting over the fact that African Americans in the 1990s, more than 40 years after the Board of Education ruling, were still not being treated the same. And so we can look back to the Board of Education and see such an important ruling saying that blacks and whites should be treated equally, but we see 40 years after it still wasn't the case. And that's why the election of Barack Obama as the first African American president was so important. And this brings us back to education. Because education in the states is considered a fundamental human right. But up until 1954, almost half the population was denied that human right. And education is incredibly important. It gives you a new perspective on how things are. Just imagine if everyone in the classroom had the same experiences. You wouldn't get different opinions. And so up until 1954, all you had was white students giving white opinions and black students giving black opinions. And you didn't have that mixing, and students didn't realize what it was like to come from a different background. And that's why education is so important, is because it gives you perspective. But at the same time, it also allows you to access so much more in society. Because you're not going to find a president in America who didn't attend school. You're not going to find a person elected as a Supreme Court justice, as a congressperson, who didn't go to university, who didn't go to high school. And so education is so important in America to attain high status as a politician, as a, as a lawyer. And so for so long, America can said there's two types of education, those for the whites and those for the blacks. And that's why this decision was so important, and that's why this decision eventually, after so much fighting, gave us the 44th president who was the first African American. 
because Barack Obama wasn't attending school in Arkansas in 1957. He wasn't even alive in 1954. But the events that happen here had the, events, had the effect that historical events do on the present. They shaped the way the society was going to fall. Or to fall. And so, I mean, Barack Obama went to great schools when he attended them in America. He went to Harvard University. He went to Columbia Law School. And what's important about that is the fact that he would not have got that education had it not been for the 1954 Brown versus the Board of Education ruling. And there's so much more I could talk about, so many things that happened during the Civil Rights Movement that show that change doesn't happen overnight. It takes years of struggling. And that's what's really, really fascinating about history is that you can have these big rulings where something becomes law, but at the same time, law and how things are aren't necessarily the same. It takes years of slow, slow change in order to go from the statement that everyone ought to have the same education to Barack Obama being elected. And that's not to say that the problems have been solved in America. The Civil, the Civil War happened more than 150 years ago in America when the North fought the South. But people are still of the opinion that the South was doing the right thing or that the North was wrong. And it just shows that even over time, no matter how much law tries to change things, how much protests try to change things, real change is such a slow, gradual process that it doesn't happen overnight. And so I hope you learned something today about how important education is, but also how change in education and change through laws is a slow, drawn-out process that can't be expected overnight. Thanks.